Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite subfields of mathematics, my very biased collection as indicated by the name favorite subfields. And today is something, some a field of mathematics which I have a little bit of a love-hate hate relationship uh, with it. It's called symbolic dynamics, and I've used it several times in my my research. Uh, so that's why I kind of my love relationship, and I used it several times in my research. This is kind of my hate relationship. It's a, I, I, yeah, I really like your dear, dear little field. Um, just, I'm just waffling here. And yeah, so let's get started. There's kind of a nice mixture between combinatorics and analysis. And this is always kind of beautiful and somehow difficult at the same time, because as, if you're young, then you just think, okay, analysis and combinatorics is really different, but actually it's kind of the same. And this is an example where things overlap uh, nicely. So um, yeah, why not have a look now, so for me, the whole idea starts with dynamical system, dynamics, whatever you want to call them. And the standard example I have in mind is like you have a little billiard table, so this is some surface, and you have a little billiard ball on that table, and you want to track it, the, track it down how it, how it moves when it kind of reflects along the wall. And my drawing here is terrible, but this gets kind of really complicated. So essentially a dynamical system is a particle or a set of particles and its state varies over time. Let's say it's trajectory and we want to track that down. Right? Billions. Um, a more less toy model, a more down-to-earth real-world model, not down-to-earth, a real-world model would be weather, which is like multiple particles and you want to uh, kind of see how they interact and it's really, really difficult. And you can do that in many, many ways. You can have a kind of tracking time how time changes, right? It varies over time. That's kind of the point, how a system varies over time. And you can kind of measure time continuously. And then you end up with classical dynamics, if you want. Or you can measure time discreetly. And then you end up with more like the combinatorical dynamics, symbolic dynamics, algebraic dynamics, whatever you want to call it. But I hope that makes some sense. You have some system and you want to track its behavior, but usually the system is like difficult, like weather, and it's not easy to predict uh, the behavior and you want to some tools to, to say something about it, essentially. And depending on whether you want to make it continuous, like the, the time flows continuously, or whether you want to kind of take screenshots every second or something, uh, you end up with different forms of, of dynamics. So the one that historically started this, and this is like really, really cool, and I will have a a little animation uh, in a second. So the one that really started this is the three body problem. The three body problem is like we have three point masses uh, as in this illustration, which we'll run in a second on. You have three point masses and you want to calculate their trajectory. So this was the original type of problem. And um, it's kind of very old by now. And people try to do that, of course, after Newton mechanics, right? And Poincaré, roughly around Poincaré's time, so the 1880s, people kind of came up with this notion of a chaotic system because it's like really difficult and there are no, no known closed forms and some depend heavily on the input and it gets kind of really, really, really complicated. Even such a really simple model, like when you have the sun, uh, the earth and the moon. So here are examples of closed solutions and they, they, they are just really beautiful and they look very different. Um, so the three point masses are obviously the three point masses and these are stable solutions and there are also many many unstable solutions but these are the stable ones and they look really complicated I feel like um, I can't tell what's going on let me just have a look I can't tell what's going on it's too difficult I take it back I can tell what's going on in, in this middle picture yeah I guess I get I get that pattern yeah, I can predict the future. Um, no, just kidding. So these are the, the, the stable ones where you can actually predict what's going on. And this is just, this is really easy, actually. Yeah, I'm surprised. The other ones are a little bit more complicated. This ring picture here, uh, pretty beautiful pictures. Ah, oh, beautiful. And uh, so you'll find that if you Google three body problem, I think it was on the, uh, on the Wikipedia page. Anyway, the point is, um, even this toy problem is really difficult. So people try to came up with better ways of doing it. So people try to the analytic approach and it gets you somewhere, but it doesn't do all uh, what it could. And as soon as that happens, some approach, let me say fails. It's a bit, it's a bit 
unfair to say that the continuous approach fails, but let me just say it fails. Um, since this is a video, you can't complain anyway. So let me just say it fails. And then you would like to come up with a, a different way of looking at the problem. And this is essentially where uh, symbolic dynamics came from, but more in the billiards type thing. So symbolic dynamics came from billiards on surfaces, if you want, from geodesics on surfaces, which are like difficult uh, to compute again, co combinatorially, not combinatorially, uh, analytically. And the main idea, without too much going into details, is to somewhat encode a space, uh, a continuous space, or a, just a space which was a lot of points in a combinatorial way. And the standard is to make the time discrete and encode it in some form of a combinatorial way. And the way to do this is uh, using, using some form of sequences, and to sequences then you have associated automata. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. Let's just do this baby example of the Cantor set, which is clearly an object of analysis, if you want. But you can think of it as an object of combinatorics by just using uh, the sequences, the binary sequences to encode it. And it's really easy. Uh, going zero means going left, and one means going right, and you can write down different, every point uh, associated in the Cantor sequence is some binary sequence, right? So you can actually encode um, an infinite thing in a finite thing where you just think of a, a little state thing where you have a one or two and depending on what you do you can you can just go a zero you can go to one you can go to this or you can go to this and you can do that always the same probability a half and the kind of words you write down in that alphabet encode points in the Cantor set and this is kind of a shift of idea from a continuous to a more discrete point of view, right? So now you have sequences and you can try to think about sequences and you can even make it even smaller. You can just think of a little graph and you can try to think about little graphs. And since everyone likes to think about little graphs, I hope you do like to think about little graphs because little graphs are fantastic. Um, yeah, because because of that, it actually gets, gets pretty nice. And then, then you end up with algebraic combinatorics or dynamic, uh, what is a um, symbolic combinatorics, and I shouldn't have said combinatorics. You end up with algebraic dynamics or symbolic dynamics, uh, co co combinatorial dynamics, whatever you want to call it. And that's really what symbolic dynamics is all about. And here's a fun statement you can prove uh, using methods from symbolic dynamics. So a map, a period of, of some map, whatever, some map that goes from I to I, fine, I is some interval, fine, uh, here. And a period of, of a point is something when you apply the map n times, you get back to itself. That would be period n. So here's an example of period four, right? It's kind of a little circle in your diagram. And then there's this famous statement, the famous completely strange type of proof, uh, thing where you say, okay, you have the following ordering on the natural numbers. So three, five, seven, nine, so it goes in this direction, then it travels all the way down here and starts here again, and so on. So it goes through all the odd numbers, then through all the odd numbers times two, then through all the odd numbers times four, and through all the odd numbers times eight, and so on. And at the very end, you have the powers of two with one at the very, very end of that chain, and it gives you an order on the natural numbers. So uh, a point of period one is a fixed one. Excellent, and then you can show that if period, you have some point in your, any continuous function, ridiculously general, of order m, then it has periods of all the lower order, or of all the bigger orders in this order, right? So if you have something of order 2 to the 4, you have also something of those guys. And in particular, if you have something of, of order 3, it's kind of the, the surprising one, you have everything. You have points of any order, which is kind of very strange. So why is 3 such special? I don't know. But anyway, in symbolic dynamics, you can answer this question because this operation of taking iterative power has made the time of a certain type of uh, system that you can get from the function f has made it discrete and you can use kind of Markov chain type uh, arguments on graphs to uh, prove those types of statements. Kind of really nice. But the statement is kind of strange, right? As soon as you have period three, you have all periods. Kind of why? Kind of very strange statement. Anyway, 
the most famous example of symbolic dynamics and that's maybe what you can think of if you want so by far the most famous example is a, a paper by shannon who kind of made this one paper that pioneered the mathematical theory of communication which is by the name by the way the name of the paper and shannon used a lot of techniques from symbolic dynamics essentially was giving birth to that field not quite there was some work before but this paper was just so influential and important um, in our computer age having a mathematical theory of communication is just really important and if you read this paper so this picture for example is stolen from that paper uh essentially languages are modeled in kind of the same type of system so here you have a language where you have a probability uh, 40 percent that you write letter a and one percent uh, 10 percent to write letter b or whatever and then whatever something else something more 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 and kind of shannon studies uh those types of symbols and then applies methods from uh, symbolic dynamics and this is my story about symbolic dynamics essentially a finite time slice of a continuous problem uh ha ha having to do something with billiards or weather or something like that anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope to see you next time